score, bro. <laughs> hey, folks, man, this is Monk, and we are back with another episode of Classes of Cinematics. And this is a film show about the classic films that shaped and worked our childhoods. And I'm joined, as always, with my co host. We got Bobby Blockbuster. Yo, yo, yo. And as you can tell by his shirt, we're going to be talking about a special classic right here. We're going to be talking about The Warriors. This film came out in 1979. It involves a turf battle between New York City street gangs that rages from Coney Island to the Bronx. The Warriors are mistakenly figured for the killing of a gang leader. Soon they have every gang in the city out to get revenge. And they must make excuse me, their own way across the city to their own turf. Mm-hmm. And um, this film is directed by Walter Hill. Uh, the cast is uh, pretty uh, pretty dope. We got Michael Beck. Uh, we got James Remar, um, Deborah Van uh, Valkenberg, uh, David Patrick Kelly, um, Terry Mikos, David Harris, uh, Marcelano Sanchez, Dorsey Wright, um, Tommy McKitterick, uh, Roger Hill, Paul Greco, Lisa Maurer, um, and um, Lynn Thigpen, Conrad Sheehan, um, Edward Sewer, and a rack of people, man. Even Steve James is in there. Wow, mm, I didn't notice he damn. was in there. Uh, you might recognize him from I'm Gonna Get You Sucker, uh, Karate Joe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of people in here, man. Um, this is also a um, very interesting film, man. So um, what do we like about The Warriors? Ooh, well, for starters, uh, it's, it's the concept. Mm -hmm. The story and the way it's executed. Like, watching this film, it kind of plays like, you know... Uh, an old school video game like Double Dragon or Bad Dudes, where you just got a, <laughs> yeah. a, a group of individuals just walk. You walk down the, the wrong alley, and next mm. thing you know, you fight. And then you gotta scuffle with the big bad. And then you know, you take another turn, and then you fight and scuffling. You know, and that I mean, the way that this film portrays that, in in the way that it does, is just it's so entertaining. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I, I love this. And then you know what we get from the start. You know, when when the film first starts, you get that big wonder wheel. So we, we get the, the ultimate representation that the Warriors are coming from Coney Island, because that is, I, I want to say that is a landmark from mm -hmm. from Coney Island, the, the, the big wonder wheel. And, you know, as, as the film progresses, we get a look at all these other gangs, but the way that they go from, like, all the, the the gangs going to this big meeting and then you know we see the warriors and they're giving us like, like these little introductions to each one of them you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying kind of so we get you know a, a little bit of a an attachment to to each one of these characters and you know gives us a, a little bit of a sense of what they're bringing to the table as you know the the film will progress you know mm -hmm. what i mean i thought that that was just super dope yeah, yeah. I mean, essentially, they're kind of at the end of the line. They're hood on the, on the train. And mm -hmm. if you know anything about New York subway system, it's fast. It's like, like DC joint is, is nothing in comparison, man. As far as the number of stops, as far as just the, the, the amount of space that it covers, man. So, but they're at the end of the line, you know, and they've got a long way to go, um, you know, to get back to the home. I mean, it's 30 miles, which really doesn't seem like much here. You can go 30 miles in 30 minutes. You know, or less, you know, depending on, you know, how you're going. But um, public transportation. Yeah, in, in a density packed New time. York City, it's a long, you know, space, man. Especially the trains, they're not moving that fast. Mm -hmm. They're hitting stops, like, like every, you know, just every few steps, man. There, there, there's some spots, man, you could probably run to the next stop faster than the train to get to the next stop. You know what I'm saying? Right. But, but. In a way, man, this is kind of like an urban version of Homer's Odyssey, man, because they're like they're a crew, but they're in hostile territory. They're just trying to get home. And each stop is a different crazy encounter, you know, that they have to endure, man. So so one aspect that I really like of this film is just the time that it was um, created. And um, and it's trying to capture that that magic of the, you know, 70s, New York, late 60s, um, 70s early 80s when, when they did have a, a pretty dense um gang culture man and yeah. that's one of the things like you know you see them you know these guys with the uh, patches on their vests you know or the cut off um jean jackets you know what i'm saying that they wear as as kind of their uniforms man so that that was authentic i think this movie does take some liberties with some of the 
other aspects of it. Like um, some of these crews and gangs, they just they just look wild. Like, yeah, you can tell it's the, the movie stuff, like the yeah. baseball crew, yeah, the Fury. Like, yeah, yeah, you know, anyone that got the vest on and the patches, that is pretty authentic. And there were even a few of the fancy ones I saw er- earlier with those with those dope ass golden colored sound oh, jackets, man. Yeah. Yep. That, that's baller, yo. That's when you know yeah. you was probably getting some money and you was probably super tough to be able to walk around back then and not get that joint snatched from you because that was a thing with these games, you know, snatching patches from each other, you know, if you yeah. get someone up or caught someone slipping. But now you're absolutely right. The the imagination and the originality and like the, the, the thought that and effort that went into creating all of these games that mm-hmm. are presented in front of us. I mean, you know, granted, like you said, some of them are far fetched, but it just it, it it makes the whole film feel that much more cohesive. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And as as it goes through, it just shows us how many obstacles, how many hurdles the warriors are going to have to go through to get back to Coney. Like the way that they establish that they are like pretty much the last stop on the train going mm-hmm. the furthest away. They have to go through, you know. You gotta Ellen go through a lot of hoods, man. Ellen Ellen it's crazy, you know, just with the setup. There's a gang meeting, man, and the leader uh, was that Cyrus? Cyrus, yep. Um, yeah, gang. so Cyrus gang. calls a citywide meeting of all the gangs. Basically, he wants to organize the gangs, man. He wants them to stop fighting each other and go after the real problem, which they think is the police. Because interesting thing is, man, it, it's a it, there, there's a duality to the nature of the gangs at this time, man. And um, I do want to recommend, folks, if you haven't. Watch it. There's a dope documentary called Rubble Kings that came out around 2010, and it's about the era that this film is based on, man. And what's crazy, you had a, um, you know, they were doing gang stuff in that in that era, you know, you know, hustling, fighting with other gangs, kind of being menaces to the neighborhood. But there was this guy named Benji, uh, rest in peace. I think he passed a couple years ago, and I think he was a member. I'm not sure of that gang, so you know, don't attack me if I get it wrong. But it might have been the Savage Skulls. He was one of the leaders, and he decided to, like, put this gang stuff to use, man, and start organizing in the community, um, you know, protesting, challenging the government to offer more uh, services to, the, to his community because he was in the Bronx. And if you know the Bronx in that era, it was a shithole, man. You know, it was pretty much no man's land at that time, you know. And so you got this going on, man. So Cyrus is trying to organize these gangs instead of just warring with each other. You know, let's go after these uh, police and these politicians that are making it hard for us to to move out here and, they, and yeah, basically it's a united front. Yeah, yeah. And that's the whole idea. It's like we've got there's more of us than there are of them. You know, we could really take over and and run this. So and in the process of that meeting, he gets assassinated. Yep. Um, and it's crazy because you know um, you know the, the assassin just randomly shouts out the warrior's name and puts it on them, um, which is weird. I don't know if he really had a straight up beef with them. Or if it was just that that they're the smallest group. One of the other warriors saw him pull the trigger. Oh, okay, it was. Okay. It, I want to say yeah. it was Vermin who actually saw <laughs> saw him. Yeah, the, the the character that's played by uh, David Patrick Kelly. I'm, I bet mad other people saw that, but because <laughs> yeah. if you look at how it went down, how they filmed it, yeah, no that's way, what I'm saying. No one. I mean, he didn't even have a he, silencer he, or he's nothing. He's holding the gun out extra long after yeah. he does it. No like, silencer. Yeah, but but for the sake of the movie, we got to get a um uh, 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 we got to get a um. Uh, scapegoat and it's the warriors mm-hmm. so the warriors and everyone's like get him and they get the hell out of here and that's when they get clean on like and that's the yeah. leader They're like yeah. he was he was flying solo at that point because everyone's scattered at the yeah. gunshot it's you know so, what i'm saying because yeah. cleon actually gets it he get. I, I, i'd assume he's dead they probably yeah beat him to death, they think they know? beat him to death and yeah then the rest, while he's getting he's kind of makes a sacrifice for the rest of them to at least get a head start to get away mm-hmm. and they try to get get out of there and that's where our story starts yep Oh. And just uh, and to your point, um, you know everything that that Cyrus was saying. The initial, uh, the original poster actually featured a quote that said, "These are the armies of the night. They are one hundred thousand strong. They mm-hmm. outnumber cops five to one, and they could run New York City." Mm-hmm. That outraged a lot yeah. of people, and they had yeah. to. They and it, it in like in the back of the poster was all these different you know gangs and, and and things of that nature and that's when they like had to switch the cover art to just the warriors with like a white back. It's just time because seventy nine like gangs were still active, dude. Like Big time. It's, it's, like I, I saw my friends from up there. Like they aunties and uncles was out there with running with these some of these uh, crews that was active at, at that time, man. So. It, it was a real thing, and to put this movie out, I can see how that could be an issue. Just like kind of like in Cobra, 
when they had the um, that movie came out. When the the, the 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 night stalker and the night uh, what was that, the, the night slasher, the night slasher, yeah, that, that, that was still going on, and to put that movie out, I think that was just a crazy choice that, that could possibly fan the flames of of and, and the, you know and <laughs> cause problems. And the actual like the real gangs, they were like intrigued by this film. They even said that the film trucks were protected by a real gang called the Mongrels for five hundred a day. Mm, mm, yeah. So I mean, that, and. And then, you know, not for nothing, when this film first came out, I mean, it was, you know, it was creating a lot of issues. And they were saying that, you know, like gangs would go to the theaters mm -hmm. and then they would start having scuffles and or I could see that being each other out. Yeah, yeah man. At, at, at the screenings of this film. Yeah, especially in New York City, man. Yeah, like, man. It's a lot of like, like you go a couple blocks over and you're in someone else's territory and it could be issues man like like it's i'm telling you man check out that rubble case documentary it was streaming on netflix at one point um but even if you see the physical copy that is definitely worth picking up to watch mm -hmm. and it's not only is it so informative but it's also a really well made well produced um documentary but but like i said another aspect that i do like is this journey man like um yeah. they are having a um you know, use their wits, and, and it's crazy. There are some things that don't add up to me because, like, at the end, like right after they finally get a rest after they leave the initial gathering, and then they're arguing over who's the leader. He's man, you don't even know where the train is at, and I'm like, there's no way he was a teen in the in this era in New York City, and didn't at least wasn't aware of at least how to navigate the train. So right, that that just the, the right, and right they so easily hop yeah. on it at the beginning. Yeah. But you know what? But like you said, yeah, what I do love about this is that that like that sense of like you're running for your life. Yeah, like you yeah, get definitely. you get that that tense feeling like we're running with them like like as a viewer you feel like you're one of the warriors because you see everything that they're going through from when cyrus gets shot all the way to the end just to try to make it back home mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and anyone who's been caught in any kind of a situation you know regardless to it, how big or small you know the end goal is always just make it back home make it back to your comfort zone and this film does a great way of just you know accentuating that fact you know what i'm saying i like how they um the communication as well because um they, there is the, the bigger leaders that are you know have more control over more you know individuals and mm -hmm. they're calling the orders based on the fact that they think the warriors are the ones that got got so they put the word out like yo get these goose but but it's funny they're putting it out through the radio and they're kind of talking That's in a coded dope. way that, that i is think is really dope, dope. like and and, and and as we get updates their messaging changes and leaving the announcer on the radio changes her messaging to to to, to say what they want to convey. You know, basically, um, um, I forgot what the first initial command was, but the, the, the DJ. Oh like, yeah, keep your eyes open. Yeah, you know, she was like, yeah. So this is this is going out to that crew, the Warriors, uh, bad crew from Coney, mm -hmm. and then she was like, yeah, just hope y'all make it home safe. But then she plays the song, uh, what is it? Nowhere to run. Yeah, nowhere to run to. Nowhere to. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? Like, and then as they continue to progress mm -hmm. closer to Coney, the songs change, and it's almost like she's like, you know, letting the other gangs know, yeah, they're still here. So yeah. the hit's still mm -hmm. out. Or the, or, or let them they're headed your way they're headed your way you know, yeah or even if, if they miss because even they're, they're they're getting updates like when when the other crews run up on them and they escape them like um i like that one part where they're running through that one block and you could tell these guys are just kind of soft but but they but they had to click up it's just one of the things you just got to click up for survival mm -hmm. that's when they pick up the uh the, um, the young lady. Name? Um, oh, that was the orphans. Um, the orphans, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the orphans try to be tough, but the orphans. I, I, what, what was interesting to me, they don't really want to get involved, man. They just don't want to be chumped. You know what I'm saying? Because well, they're underlings. They're not even on the radar. Yeah. Like it, the, the, and, the, and, the one dude from the bigger gang. Like when when uh, someone tells him, he's like, "Yeah, man, the Warriors just made it through the orphans." He was like, "Dog, they're not even on the list." But, but the funny thing with the orphans is like. He knew that these guys were on the run. And the crazy thing is, at this point, and this is one of the things where if you would have stopped them or were able to turn, that's going to get you a lot of problems. But they don't yeah. even care about that. He just don't want no problems. He don't, he's not really trying to, and to, he, to be a hero, he, but he also doesn't want to be... Um, disrespecting the beat down or you could tell they're just clicking up for some well, he was not really major player he was going to give him a pass too until yeah. until the chick came out and was like you just gonna let him walk mm -hmm. through here and he was like oh oh so then he felt he had a point to prove he was like y'all got to take off your vest yeah and yeah. then walk as civilians you can't 
yeah. can't slide through here as, as as the Warriors. And they're like, man, hell no. Mm-hmm. You know? And, then, <laughs> and that's going to be – and then Mercy, she decides to roll with them. And then, then I looked at scene because then they – like a few minutes later – to the steps, <laughs> and the next thing you know, it's thirty dudes with all kinds of weapons. Like, look, man, now I got to do something, man. And you know, the, the Cause, cri- cause the, I feel bad for them because they really didn't want to do nothing. But if you didn't, you're going to be getting shitted on the rest of your, your existence out here. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And dude, not for nothing. Uh, the dude uh, who played Swan, Michael Beck, he actually like there's a part where you know when we first initially meet Mercy, she's wearing the pink shirt, mm-hmm. and then you know next time we see her, she has the jacket. Yeah. Because when they got into the the scuffle scene with the cops and they're all running away, he flings a bat and it actually like hit her mm-hmm. in in the face. Oh, <laughs> or and, and and she broke her arm though, so she's mm-hmm. covering the the, the cast oh, okay. with the jacket. And then yeah, they say that she um she uh still has the scars. Mm, that's crazy. Still has the scars, man. That's crazy. Yeah, from from getting hit with the bat, and then not for nothing, he actually uh, it says that um, Michael Beck accidentally broke three of the stuntman's ribs while running from the scuffle with the Fury. So the baseball bat team, mm-hmm. he uh, he broke one of their ribs too. So this dude out here, you know, <laughs> even though he's you know the I mean, he's a little budget error, dude. He, he's the leader of the gang, but yeah. he, he's really hurting people on set. <laughs> I doubt we got the, the I doubt we got the highest um safety standards and all of that with the making of this film, man. This mm-hmm. feels like a lot of also guerrilla style stuff. Oh, definitely, and, definitely. You know, just for budget constraints. But but uh, yeah, but like I said, man, you know, you got that cool element of them just running and encountering different situations. Uh we also get the situation I thought was dope with the um the um what were they were they the Jezebels? Was that a game? Oh or the Lizzie's. Oh the Lizzie's, yeah. yeah. And I thought that was dope because yeah. but, but then again it's also guys being dumb because it's like you're on the run and you see a, a group of chicks and you decide to oh let's hang out with like bro don't we gotta get back to Coney like motherfucker trying to take our lives but it's also reminds me of Homer's Odyssey when they run into the sirens in a way you know is that, yep. that like the <laughs> and, and that part is cool to me because they go in the party and they're not unsuspecting but yes New York City had women gang members at the time dude and some of them were just as nasty as the men and like and or or maybe if you had savage skulls you had savage skull ladies savage skulls yeah. you know and 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 that totally makes sense but but they're not thinking about that man you know especially you know um, you know machismo and and uh <laughs> you know what I'm saying all the dudes are you're not expecting these and these the, women to be a threat the thing that's crazy is they link up with the uh the other two because uh, I know it was uh it was chief or was it coach chief I think and, it was and three right it was the three. And then uh, the other two link up, and he's like, mm-hmm. what happened to Ajax? He's like, oh, he got jammed by the cops. Where when we first meet Ajax, he's talking about going out there and trying to find the chick and everything. Mm-hmm. And then he ends up getting jammed up because the, the one young lady sitting on the park bench yeah. is like, oh, hey, what's going on? And then he kind of, you know, he goes back and tries to get all, like, aggressive with it. Like, yeah. she was already, like, kind of down to get down, and he starts getting all, like, weirdo aggressive. And then she jams him up, locks him, you know, puts the handcuffs yeah, on. Yeah, she's like an undercover cop. She's an undercover like, cop. This, 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 which was wild. You know, so they I already seen, you know, like, we're, we're, we're you know, yeah. pretty much in essence chasing the cats going to get you. Right now, y'all need to get back home. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then they bring that information to them, and then they still yeah. get lost in, in, you know, like you said, in their mochismo and thinking like, oh, yeah, you know, now's a good time to party. Let's just, let's take a... Take a step back from all this chaos and yeah. you know have some fun with the ladies. It's like y'all still out of town and y'all still getting headhunted. Still marked, you know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Listen to the radio. They yeah. still putting out songs, yeah. letting you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Walk man back then, dog. So, but yeah, you still marked, you know, in in this territory, man. But but that that is dope, man. But but um, overall too, I do like the acting, man. I mean, these guys do a good job of making it. Um, pretty believable yes and and, and 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 like i said i think you know even though some of the gangs are a bit exaggerated but but we get a like nice variety of of, of that representation in this film man because yes. people think it might have just been the, the rough neighborhoods but dude you had you had um italian gangs in the north bronx neighborhoods that would rock you just as quickly as you would get rocked in in, in brooklyn so yeah like, like the quote-unquote like the b-boys yeah. like the, you know the ones that are break dancing and mm-hmm. stuff i mean dude and like you said 
to the far fetchness. They they had the, the gang of mines, but they, they you know, the, the, the they were uh, uh, those are mines, yeah, the ones that yeah yeah, yeah. the mines. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But they, yeah. you know, they, some, of them, some of them was a bit far fetched because because then like when it was coming on, I seen like an Asian game and they all had these funny hats on. I was like, yo, why they all dress like they leaves? Yeah, yeah, like yeah, <laughs> like, like 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 a step up from like, yeah. like monks and stuff. But yeah, man. Um, but that's just like I said, that's just a, uh, you know a shout out to the creativeness and uh, you know the, the element that they were trying to create to, mm-hmm. to make it seem. But also, too, I think it's one of those things when you make a film like this, you don't want it to be too close to real games, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, like you, you want there to be that kind of like, like you're never going to see a movie that, unless it's a documentary style or it's about that true story. You're never going to see people claiming Bloods and Crips in, in a real movie, like, right. like even in Grand Theft Auto when they made the San Andreas. The, the gang was like the I forgot what they were called, um, um, but they had green. They were wearing yeah. green in that game. Like every every, you know. Well, and also this film because it was it was more widespread, and you know because of all of the gang element, it had to separate itself from like a film like let's say the Education of Sonny Carson, mm-hmm. yeah, where yeah, it was definitely. the Lords and the Hawks, and that and those that, were real you know, gangs. Those though. were real gangs. Crazy. And that film, I don't know, they got away on that. a true story, and it, it, it is it, it hits heavy. You know, so this one, you know, had to kind of separate itself from that. That's why I think we got gangs like the Furies, you know, which is funny because uh, yeah, when, like leave it right here. All these dudes look like they're wearing geese, yo. Like, yeah, they all look, look like they all look like, like show nuts. Like they bought the karate. Yeah, yeah look, I wouldn't mess with them. Yeah, <laughs> who's the baddest? Oh, were those yeah. the riffs? <laughs> I think those are the riffs. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but that you know, and it's funny because uh, when you think about like uh, you know, the Furies, the the leader dude, like uh, the one with the green and the one eye. I want to say uh, they said Marilyn Manson emblemated mm. that that character. I guess state. I, I don't really listen to him too often, but I know he used to paint his face up and stuff. And he mm. actually did like he got mm. some of his, okay. his his stage presence from that character, you know, mm-hmm. which is wild too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy, man. They, they do a good job with the music as well, and just using the environment of New York City as well, man. Um, there, you know the. The, the, the train rumbles and, and like all that. like the, the fights are pretty cool man I definitely appreciate you know how that plays out and um and know. the music yeah like you know it's not just like the, the actual songs that are playing but like you know these scores that we're getting they, they really kind of rev up the intensity you know what I'm saying and there's a lot of running you know what I'm saying when you're when you're watching them I mean like like I said this sense of them running for their lives literally I mean mm-hmm. I don't know what kind of shoes they was wearing but some chucks it, 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 i'm <laughs> sure they feast was sore i mean shit running from where what, what was it manhattan mm-hmm. yeah that to back to Coney? Adrenaline, man that's going to do it to you dude that's going to do it to yeah they definitely got wild with these yeah, games it's like, like a magnum pi game yeah, you know got the hawaiian <laughs> shirt it's like wherever we can get the same shirt but, but like the like 15 copies of it yeah <laughs> and, and, i mean then you got there. the one gang that's all on roller skates the one that's <laughs> <laughs> out on them dog what? Get them jokers. man i couldn't be in that game i can't roll skate for nothing i'll no. leave them in the wind <laughs> <laughs> they would just have me playing goalie yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's wild man i mean i mean eventually we do get to um a conclusion man they make it to um coney island which i think is a pretty cool confrontation too because it's just not over then you know and that's where we got our dude who's the original shooter who's waiting who's actually told everyone lies about them and got every all the leadership riled up to you know get these guys and and i think it's kind of messed up because it, it's interesting because they you realize when they get to coney island you would think maybe they'd be in their hood but you realize that it's just still just them it's, it's not like they've got a bigger faction or, or a bigger hood and any uh guys waiting to have their back mm-hmm. in coney island and by then this guy's gathered all the opposition that the people that think well, they did it and mainly you know he wants to he wants to take them out just so there's no recourse yeah. or nobody's telling covering him, his own ass covering his own ass mm-hmm. and then even when they ask him like yo why did you take him out he's like man i just do stuff like that but you know what not for nothing even though he was a scumbag so but honestly scumbag. think about it though man i think some of these gangs would have also lost their standing if they did unify so so there's yeah. that motivation like yeah. the cyrus has a great idea but if that goes into effect then i lose my power there would still be a hierarchy mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying like you said i mean look when when it shows the risk they're like you know 50 60 deep 
the you know what's it uh luther david patrick Kelly, yeah. I mean, dude all of them can fit in one cadillac mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so i mean of course there, there's strength in numbers and what have you but you know with him you know what one thing i like about this is he stands out as far as like all all the acting was great but the way he certified himself as like the ultimate bad guy in this mm -hmm. you know what I'm it was it was really cool and then it's also, you know, you get to come out and play, yay, with the with the bottles. <laughs> sort of, yeah. clink, 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 come out and play, yay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> That's great. You gotta relax, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I did like the car, though, man. That beach wagon, yeah, with the all black with the graffiti all over that. Yeah. That joke was hard, man. And you know, it's funny. Um, I was I was reading this little uh, this little clip. They said that where he got that from. That one of his neighbors, I guess, as a kid, used to say that a lot. And that's where he got that from mm. and brought that into the film. So I thought that was really cool too. Yeah, you yeah. know, because that. I mean, when when you think about this film, when you think of the quotables, there's two. There's that, and then there's can you dig it? Mm -hmm. You know, dig. can you dig it? <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> And my man was out there. How, how are you? How are you having this ultimate meeting with like eight hundred people, and you are in like the Hugh Hef robe? Yeah. You know, what I'm saying straight well, chilling. He, like, was he in slip up? He says it. <laughs> says it normal the two times. Then he's like, hey, good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like all right, all right. Ooh, have the Lord kicking in. <laughs> it's crazy, man. It's, 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 it's a wild film, man. Um, but yeah, ultimately. Oh, you know, they called my man out. Um, uh, what's his name? I forgot his name in the movie. Um, Swan Patrick. Yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, Patrick Luther. Luther. Yeah, it's it called Luther out. Um, and, and I, I made a comment earlier, man. This joint ends like uh, Revenge of the Nerds because they're about to jump on the Warriors, and all of a sudden the rips come out. I'm like, hey, hold up, bro. What's going on here? And then they tell them what happens, and next thing you know, the rips. They was like, look, man, go home. They 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 step to the side and yeah. give the warriors a pass to to, to go on home while, in, while they deal with um with Luther. Because in classic bad guy dumbness, mm -hmm. you know, he he foils his own plan, mm -hmm. not knowing who's listening. Yeah, and he's like, oh yeah, I just do this because mm -hmm. you know I like to I like to do bad shit. I'm a bad guy. Yeah, you know, it's like, come on, man. Like th th these are why you know. Mm -hmm. Y'all don't make it far as 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 bad guys, you know. Talk too much. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I uh, like I was, yeah, it. Kind of ends like Revenge of the Nerds, man. The black dudes come out at the end, <laughs> and, and hold down the, the heroes, and, and and it goes on, man. But uh, but I, I still, um, this thing holds up really well. Oh, definitely. Like, it's it's fun. Even you know you can overlook the the goofy stuff, man. But but overall, it still gives you that rush, man. Like these guys on the run. They're on the hunt, and also this sense of adventure. You know, you're rooting for them throughout the journey. Um, it's, it's pretty well done. There's action, you know, the fights. Um, yo, even my man, yo, some of them don't make it. My man, they get tossed on the tracks. Yeah, fight, yeah, yeah, fight yeah, the cops. That's crazy. Yep. Yeah, man, but 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 I think it still holds up, man. It's definitely a classic that inspired a lot of um, other films. I think even Judgment Night feels like, you know, some Absolutely. parts taken from this, you know? Yes, I mean, like you said, this this film, you know, it's just it's it, it emphasizes the sense of urgency. Like I I, I you know I, I don't know how many other films at, that came out in the seventies like kind of put you on the edge of your seat, and made your your heart and adrenaline just pump the whole way through. Mm -hmm. But this one, I mean, the only time you get to sit down and really enjoy, you know, your popcorn or your 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 beverage or whatever is in the first five minutes. Mm -hmm. After that, as soon as Cyrus gets shot. It's a run for your life, yeah. you know, and the way that they, they film this and like I said, the music that's playing and because we got that, that individual interaction with all of these characters, you know, we don't want to see nothing happen to nothing. Mm -hmm. So even though we're watching them travel as a group that then gets separated, we're still kind of keeping a close eye on them as individuals, yeah. hoping that they all make it, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And just for that alone, that makes this, this film, you know, it still holds up, you know, it, it's and because it is a certified cult classic, that graininess that it still has, like with the film stock that they use, you can tell it's an older film, but it's, you know, that just now emphasizes mm -hmm. the, you know, the age of this film, but doesn't take nothing away from the film. Yeah, yeah, definitely, man. It's definitely, it's definitely a good, um, you know, film of his era, man. You know what I'm saying? I definitely enjoy this, man. <laughs> you know, every time I do take the time to watch it, man. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think that's it, man. Like the Warriors, man, definitely certified classic, bro. Um, 
So I think we're going to bring it home, folks, man, and, and wrap this one up. So make sure you follow us on Classics of Cinematics, um, at Classics Cinematics on Instagram. <laughs> and this is Monk. You catch me at Monkey Blood on Twitter and Instagram. And this is Bobby Blockbuster. You can catch me on Instagram at Bobby Blockbuster 118. Yeah, make sure you subscribe, folks. And <laughs> like, too. Use that thumb and point <laughs> <Yeah>. it up. <laughs> All right, so we out of here.